Thornby Bookshop. I'm Jacqueline Kirk and we've been invited along by Bob and Tony. I'm here with the author, Tony Schumacher. It's great to hear a chill going in the background. <laughs> <laughs> the best sound in the world is the chill slamming shut, you know. <laughs> right, the first really important question I've got for you, Tony, is are you any relation to the uh, racing driver, Michael? Do you know, I'm hoping in a few years people will be asking, Michael, are you any relation? <laughs> God help me, he's not well at the moment, so like, you know, uh, get well soon, Michael, but I'm no relation whatsoever. Well, the way you're Th writing, he might be, yeah. Well, possibly. <laughs> there, there is actually, there's, a, there's a, a drag racer in America, that doesn't mean he wears a frock. There, there's a guy in uh, America called Tony Schumacher, who's a drag racer, and I keep getting, he's kind of like a big famous uh, guy over there, and I, I keep getting emails off readers over there, because the book's out in the States, Saying, oh wow, you know, you're great. I saw you do uh, a mile and a quarter, you know, the, one, the best mile and a quarter I've ever seen in my life. And for about three weeks, I had no idea who it was, but it turns out that this guy. So I'm hoping the people are emailing him saying, I love you, boo. That's all, because yeah, it's. You know. That'd be good, wouldn't it? So, Tony, The Darkest Hour, I believe this is your um, debut novel. It is, yeah, my debut novel. Uh, it's uh, all very exciting. And weirdly, it's a debut novel, but it came out now. Like I say, it came out in the States first. Did it? So it, I'm sort of... Uh, so you're bigger in the States than you are here? I, I, I don't think I get much bigger, to be honest with you. It's, um, yeah, it, it, so it's kind of weird because, it, uh, according to every publisher over here, I'm uh, an American writer. And I, I'm possibly the most least American person you can ever meet in your life. To exactly, me. just a little bit. Yeah, you know, I live about twenty miles away from here. So, so um, with you being from Liverpool, I've just um, been getting into the book. I must admit, how come you decided to base the book in London? Uh, on, it was a. I know London really well. Originally, it was going to be set in the Channel Islands. The deal is, is that Britain have lost the Second World War, and the reason it was going to be set in the Channel Islands is because I saw a photograph of a British policeman in the Channel Islands during the war holding the door open for a German officer really? and I used to be a copper so I had that weird moment where you thought oh god look at this guy open the Nazis that's awful you know we shouldn't be doing yeah. this but then you immediately think oh hang on a minute he just wants to stay alive yeah. so when I realised that he just wanted to stay alive and he'd open that door to stay alive the problem you've got is, is what are the doors when you're open to stay alive Absolutely. and that was the question that I was asking myself when I started writing the book so it was originally going to be in the Channel Islands amazing concept, isn't it? You know, the Nazis have won the war and how yeah. do you survive in England? Exactly, that was the thing. You know, you open them doors to stay alive. Yeah. It's that whole thing that just goes back to opening them doors. It was going to be in the Channel Islands, but I couldn't afford to go to the Channel Islands. So I thought, <laughs> I'll set it in London because I know London quite well. I spend a lot of time down there. My best mate lives in London, so it was an easy kind of choice, you know? Yeah. So, your character, Rosette, is number two. Based on anyone yeah. you know, kind of? No, not really. Although, after I'd written it, uh, everyone said, That's you there. You yeah, know, everyone immediately the said, Yeah, <laughs> without the scar, yeah, you know, uh, that's you there. But, it, uh, you know, he, he's not, I don't know if he is or if he isn't, but I mean, I'm not a homicidal maniac and he can be at times. Yeah. I'm not, you know. You can be quite but I, I do, you know, not But I do see bits of me in a there are parts of me in an ex copy. I won't give you know, any of the story away, but his relationship with the little boy. Yeah. How, how did that come about? What made you decide to show that side to him and give him that story arc? Because I didn't want it to just be the, the, the usual kind of. I'm saying the usual, I'm not, I'm not having a go at anyone, but I didn't want it to just be the, the usual kind of. A thriller where he solves a crime and he, he pushes his way through life and he, he comes out the other side and so on. So I wanted it to be a bit of a conflict for him. I wanted it to be a little yeah. bit. And the minute that you introduce a child, the one thing we all want to do, hopefully, is look after yeah. kids. And it, 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 it makes it difficult, it makes him vulnerable because it's suddenly the kid, this big guy, this big. It shows that side to him and it makes you care about his character more, doesn't it? Exactly, because he's not a nice guy, Robert, <laughs> you know, and the, 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 the child <laughs> makes him that slightly bit better. He does. I yeah. hate kids made of a bat of them. In the book, you actually have like his sort of nemesis type of thing. Yeah. What? Um, Cola. Yeah, how did you sort of. Cola's a. Uh, do you know the worst thing about Cola is, is that he's a German SS officer? But I quite like, like him. him. I know. Yeah, and that was the hard part was making him likable because it's easy. You know, we've all seen a lower low and 
uh, you know, all these kind of like cartoon German officers. At the end of the day, it, they were evil, horrible, horrible, evil men. Mm. But a lot of them went on to have normal lives after the war. A lot of them, yeah. you know, went on to be postmen and went on to be doctors and and they were human on the surface. There's one chapter in the book, which I don't really want to give any of the plot away, but there's one chapter in the book where Cola wakes up having dreamt about riding his bike with yeah, his wife yeah, yeah. and he's next to... You know. Yeah, yeah, he's not in a good place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But and, like, that's yeah. the thing, he's a human being, you but know. You can and, and see that vulnerable side to him when he needs that comfort, can't you? So. I, what it goes back to, I used to work on cruise ships when I was younger. I used to sell underpants on cruise ships a long time ago. And um, there was a, a, a Japanese cruise one week where a, a lot of Japanese passengers came on board and we sailed around the Caribbean for two weeks. And through the course of this week, there was a little guy, a little Japanese guy, elderly fella that used to come in every week and he'd smile and he'd laugh and he, he, he had like broken English, you know. And I used to chat to him every week and at, at the end, well, about halfway through the cruise, I said to him, your English is getting better. I said, where did you learn English? And he said, oh, I worked on the Burma Railway. But the Burma Railway was just hell on earth. For those who don't know, it was hell on earth. It was a terrible place with terrible, unimaginable cruelties inflicted on people. And this guy, who I quite liked, <laughs> had done this job, and he suddenly had to say, hang on a minute, how's that? There's a different dimension to it. And it, so there's two sides to every character, there's two sides to going yeah. on, you know, and I think that that's what I wanted to get, it make was him human. It was portrayed really well, you know, in the book, I must admit. I haven't finished it yet. Okay. I got halfway through in a day. I, it down, so I write really big words, so there's only three or four letters to, uh, on the page, yeah. Get tucked up in my hot water bottle and read the, the other half overnight. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask you, have you got, this is your debut novel, have you got yeah. any advice to writers who are oh. looking to uh, find an, you know, find an agent? Do, you, know? you know, there's two things, one is do a course in marketing, because the first thing that you do when you write a book is before you sell the book, you've got to sell yourself. Yeah. You've got to get out there, you've got to reach out to agents, you've got to reach out to publishers, and they will want to see that you've got a market. Mm -hmm. Right, so, an interest. So, yeah. start so Facebook and Facebook, Twitter. Facebook, social media, all Twitter, everything. Reach out and talk to people. And do that, and just write, and don't give up is the big thing. Don't, don't give, give up. up. So, there you go. Well, thanks for joining us. Thank you. And oh. thanks for talking about the darkest time. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>